One of the special features of the Mercedes EQS is its four-wheel steering system. Not only the front axle has turning, moving wheels, but the back axle as well. Why? Does that make sense at all? We will discuss this in this video. The first mass-produced car with a four-wheel steering had been the Honda Prelude in 1987 and the invention of the four-wheel steering had occurred in 1903 or the first car was produced in 1903 from the Cotter Automobile, Automobile Company in the US and they just produced a few dozen steam cars. Steam cars, yeah. Well, why? The reason was the mechanical complexity. To have the back wheels turning by shafts and rods wasn't that easy. It was mechanically very difficult and therefore it took time until uh, well, the new inventions came up in nowadays. In the moment, there are only three cars, electrical driven, which have this back axle steering. That's the Porsche Taycan, the Audi e-tron GT and the EQS. The max angle which those cars provide differ the Porsche and the Audi, they show 2.8 degrees and the EQS 4.5 degrees. And there's another option, 10 degrees for the Mercedes. If you have an AMG 53 with the bigger wheels, the max angle is reduced at about 9 degrees, I think 8 point something. There's not enough space in the wheel case, in the back wheel cases for moving those big wheels for a bigger rotation. I have the 4.5 degree option in my car, but this is just limited by software. You're able to unlatch this feature full by paying money. So I have to read it. Uh, you have to pay 489 euros per year equals $522 in the moment or buy a package for three years at 1169 euros, 1250 dollars. That's a 30% discount. That's nonsense. Taking additional constant money from owners. I don't like that. No, not at all. I did not opt for that feature. I have no need for it. Here I will show you some uh, videos which I took during driving, where you can see the turning of the back wheel. Um, there is a slow driving where you can see the four degrees or four and a half degrees in action and the faster drives on the Autobahn for passing or for switching lanes. It's very difficult to recognize. I tried to, but yeah, that's it. If you're driving at slower speeds, the back wheels turn in the opposite direction of the front wheels and this reduces your turning circle. The EQS is very long. It's 5.21 meters, that equals 17 feet and an inch. And turning such a long car with a normal steering is no fun, no. The EQS with the 4.5 degrees back steering angle has a turning circle of 11.5 meters. 39 feet. This is not the best value among cars, but for such a big car, it's really good. And the Tesla Model S, which is 10 inches shorter, uh, which is just four meters, 97 centimeters long, uh, has a turning circle of about 12 and a half meter, which equals 41 feet quite a lot more. And the Tesla Model Y is a little bit better, but still above 12 meters with 12 meters and 10 centimeters, which equals 39 feet and eight inches. We have a very narrow driveway at home with a sharp turn of 90 degrees. So this is complicated uh, to move your car in and out of the garage. And it's much easier to steer the EQS than the shorter Teslas. So this is the advantage of the back steering or the first advantage. We come to another one just uh, shortly. 
but I have no need for the 10 degrees back steering. This will reduce the turning circle about two meters, six and a half feet. That's a lot, really a lot. This is like a small city car. And this is very good for the European uh, small underground parking lots. And I personally live in a countryside and have no need for that. If you have the need for it, pay for it. It's really, really good. This may give you the access to a car, which is wonderful if you do not have the normal space for it, for turning it in your parking lot. If you're traveling faster, then the wheels start turning in the same direction as the front wheels. Ooh, why that? A moving object has six degrees of freedom. Three translation and three rotation. Moving in all three directions, front, back, up, down, left, right, are the three moving translations, freedom of translations. And front back is controlled by accelerating or braking or regen. Up down is limited by the street and gravity. Uh, hopefully you do not fly with your car. And of course, the suspension and damping. Left right is controlled by the steering wheel. But there are rotations around these axes as well. If you accelerate or brake extremely, then you have a turning around the horizontal axis, so you're nicking. If you're turning your car fast, you feel the rolling of your car. The suspension on the outer wheels dives into more than the inner suspension. So they have a rolling of the car. And if you're turning, you have a third one, a jaw. It's called jawing, rotation of the car. If you switch lanes on fast drives, on autobahns or highways, then the car has to jaw at first a little bit, then you move over to the other lane and then jaw back. This will always combine with a little bit of roll. So you have a jaw roll movement moving over and a jaw roll for moving in the direction of the lane. So this has back steering. Uh, now moves the car parallel or in a transverse uh, fashion to the other lane. And this has two advantages. Every jawing of a car brings you less comfort and may result in malaise or motion sickness at worst. And especially a combination of jawing and rolling. This is not good for the motion organ uh, of uh, the homo sapiens. And if you avoid this combination, then you have more comfort. And that's the first reason. The second reason, every rotation in a car needs energy. Have a look at the fast rota rotating wheels of your car. Uh, you need a lot of energy for spinning them up. With bigger wheels, this is quite a lot of rotation energy. And therefore, for race cars, uh, the rims are specified with their moment of rotational inertia. The higher this moment is, the more energy you need for spinning up the wheels. And due to this reason, the Formula One racing cars just have 13 inch wheels. Then the metal is just in the middle of the wheel and the further away from the rotation axis the mass is, the higher the uh, moment of rotational inertia is and the more energy you need for spinning up the wheels. So this accelerating and braking uh, for those race cars need a lot of energy for spinning up and reducing the spin of the cars. Reducing the spin of the car, <laughs> you can see at the rotors of the wheels are glowing red. The Tesla Model S performance will accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour, about 0.2 seconds faster with the 19 inch rims, not the 21 inch rims. So the less your moment of rotation inertia is, the better your acceleration times are. So a lot of people do not recognize this physical fact. 
The same happens if your car turns. Now you do not have the, uh, uh, the moment of rotational inertia of the wheel, but the moment of rotational inertia of the whole heavy car, those 2.5 metric ton car, you have to start rotation with. And this needs energy. And turning it back after moving to the other lane needs energy again. You won't regen that. You need the energy and you need it again to move back or to stabilize in the new lane. And then you need the energy again to turn the car moving to the other lane and turn back. Well, these are small amounts, but to raise this energy, you need a little bit of time. So the sportivity and activity of the car is faster if you have these back wheels turning in the uh, same direction as the front wheels, moving parallel to the second lane. As I said, you just need a small angle for turning the back wheels for this uh, change of lanes. And therefore, Porsche and Audi just have 2.8 degrees of maximum for the movement of the back wheels. And well, they are looking for agility, for sportivity. The Audi e-tron GT is the same uh, as the same platform as the Porsche Taycan. So they are sports cars and they need or they are looking for this agility for the movement on the lanes. And the Mercedes is more made for comfort. So they have a bigger angle for having, well, the movement of the car in city centers, uh, turning circles, making driving easier. Important for Mercedes is not only the comfort, but as well the sportivity. Why? Well, in 1990, the partnership between AMG and Mercedes started, and there Mercedes has to split the identity of its brand uh, to, well, keep the comfort lane for the classic customer and adapt a sportive, yeah, brand for the sports car they wanted to reach and Mercedes with their silver arrows in the past, a hundred years ago, they had this sportive uh, character and the AMG, the brand AMG stands for this activity as well. So they want to have the comfort as well as the sportivity activity uh, with this four wheel steering. Yeah. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come.